Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the 1999 and 2000 FLIR Ultra football sets. By 1999, FLIR had finally gotten Ultra into a groove. Starting in 1997, they developed a model that was able to be replicated basically through to the end of FLIR Ultra's run. And 1998 really cemented it, which allowed 1999 to be the first year where you really saw them trying to explore the model and figure out how to move forward with it. And it's kind of interesting because they still have a full bleed image with a logo floating up in the corner, which is you know, what they were doing for FLIR Ultra. But instead of having gold foil down at the bottom, which felt kind of stamped on in virtually every complete set, or every single set leading up to here, except for 1991, here they have a hollow foil surface that looks more like a sticker. It doesn't have the, the kind of concrete interaction with the card that we'd seen previously. So the card does feel a little bit different from the, the cards before and really the cards after as well. Kind of weird. But other than that, the card was following very much in line with you know the whole full bleed with a really well-selected image. That was just kind of the way the Ultra worked, and this fell along right with everything they'd been doing. But of course, the big thing about FLIR Ultra at this point was their two parallels, the gold medallion and the platinum medallion. And for 1999, the gold medallion has a wonderful metallic quality where the burnish of the entire background just, it glows. It's a really impressive effect that they pulled off here. And on the card back, they have gold medallion in gold foil, but it's on a surface that was often used for autographs. The reason they have that is because of the platinum medallion. Now, the platinum medallion, of course, is done the same way as the gold medallion. It's just that they have a, a silver burnish of the background as opposed to the gold burnish. But on the back, that strip is where they put the serial numbering, which for 1999 was serial numbered out of, well, 99. Makes sense. In 1998, they serial numbered the cards out of 98. In 99, they serial, them, uh, serial numbered them out of 99. Pretty basic and straightforward. The rookies, however, are very different. And this was pretty interesting because this is the only time that they, or this isn't the only time, this is the first time that they did a single release of Ultra in quite a while. And in fact, single releases is, is what they would do from here on out. So there was no Series 2 in 1999, which means all the rookie cards show up in the main set. You don't have any confusion about it's a Series 2 card, but is it the actual rookie or not? Here it's all very straightforward, but it also means that all the rookies come in their college uniforms, you know, not with their, not with their pro uniforms. But the cards are very distinct because right on the front they have two ovals for a logo that very prominently says rookie. This is a card that's not backing down. It is really making sure that people get the idea that these are rookie cards. They also use gold holofoil, which is a nice treat. It makes a little bit of a difference from the veteran cards in the set. But they also have a team logo on the card, which is a wonderful addition, which helps for the cards to feel like pro cards. It really helps you to, to better associate the players with the teams that they had been drafted by. And naturally they have the gold medallion parallel as well, but it's the platinum medallion cards that are really significant because with these cards, they're all serial numbered out of 65. So they not only did they limit the number of rookie cards in the set by having only one series, they also made the rookies harder to get. So it's uh, yeah much more challenging. But they also had a subset in this set, which was looking back at the Super Bowl. And so all of the players in this set are either Denver Broncos or Atlanta Falcons. The cards don't have the player name on the front. It's all just themed around the Super Bowl. Wonderful gold holofoil logo for the Super Bowl. And then a very 1995 insert kind of design effect down at the bottom, which actually looks pretty cool. But you don't need the name on the front because when you turn it on the back, now it has a whole write-up about the particular performance or the particular event in the Super Bowl that it's talking about. It really goes in depth in it. And it makes it a really wonderful card in terms of the front just looks like it's a, like a TV screen looking at the Super Bowl. Pretty cool. 
But this card, it's like they designed the gold medallion around it because when you get that gold finish on it, the orange down at the bottom, the, the logo, everything fuses together to make these cards really, really carry well. They look fantastic. But the, gold, the platinum medallion cards are really challenging because they're numbered out of 40. And I'd love to show you one because if I, that would mean that I have one, but I don't because they're very hard to get. And that's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way that they were approaching this card set is they were trying to make it a lot more challenging and get people to pursue it a lot more. Now the set does conclude with a couple of checklists, as was the course. These cards have a, a big logo, oval logo down at the bottom, which is, it's rather bold. But they make up for it on the card back with a wonderful color effect behind the checklist, which makes the checklist backs look really cool. Albeit they're very difficult to read because the text is very small. And that's the set. So like I said, they didn't do a series two. So this was all we got, but also because there was only a single series, we only got five inserts. So things were a lot more pared down than what we'd had in the past. And the first insert set is called As Good As It Gets. And these cards, as you can see, are die cut, top and bottom, kind of rounded off on either side, obviously hollow foil on the surface, but these cards are really thick. And the reason for that is because they're actually sort of material cards. The stripes that you see on the football field are all part of the card surface, but in between is felt embedded into the card. And because the, the felt is embedded into the card, that means that unlike most other cards where the felt sticks out and can get kind of matted down, here the effect stays with it so you can really feel the delicacy of the material inside for the field. They also did a set called Caught in the Draft, which in 1998 they'd done Caught in the Draft, which was rookie cards. 1999 they continued it, so here they are in their college uniforms. In this case, they have a prism effect on the card that is the same prism effect that was used on Pacific Prism in 1999. But where in Pacific Prism, they allowed the prism it itself to read. Here in this case, they have this colorful backdrop behind that is very powerful and it's, it, it's, it lacks elegance, I will say that. It is a card that definitely makes itself known. But they did have a couple of cards that had some fun intricacy to it. The first one being Counterparts, which looks at a couple of teammates. And the players are, they have a, a glossy finish. The background behind the players is matte, so they, they're kind of different. And then the whole design theme on the inside, the colors, that has hollow foil. It has different spectral ranges, which makes the card kind of playful and kind of fun. But if you really want to find a fun card, you got to look at da Damage Incorporated. And this card is impressive. The player is in a regular glossy finish. The background behind him, the field background, is a really strong hollow foil that just makes it glow. It really is an impressive effect. But where this card really stands out is the brickwork around it. The brickwork is embossed. And so all of the little, each one of the bricks has its own texture to it but it's not a matte surface. It's actually a metallic gray with kind of a hollow foil effect. Those bricks are really, really interesting how they come across. This is one of my favorite spectral cards I've ever encountered. It's, it's really fun and fascinating just how, just how far they got into it. And they clearly used up all of their creative energy on this card because the last set, which is called Over the Top, is they're clearly burned out. I mean, this is a card that has no special design. It's just a bunch of text scattered around. It's a big card set. It's one of those popcorn affairs where you just kind of knock the thing out. And yeah, it's kind of pack filler. But that's 1999. That's all they had to it. So the card set was now getting more refined, which allowed collectors to be able to focus better on collecting the sets although the, ins or the parallels were starting to get more challenging to pursue. So it was kind of a double-edged sword. But because the sets were smaller, it did make, for those who did try to pursue the parallels, it made it a lot easier to go after them. 2000 was their opportunity to show how, how creative they were in evolving their cards. And for the 2000 
card model. They still use the same full bleed image with the floating logo and the text at the bottom. The images are not usually quite as well chosen as in previous years, but the text down at the bottom reads a lot better. It's holofoil like in 1999, but it doesn't have that sticker feel. It feels more like it's stamped on like in previous years. So it feels more like a FLIR Ultra card set like you were used to, but the blocky letters do enter into a new phase of, of the, the evolution of Ultra. But the, what's really distinct about the card is the card back, which is so powerful, screaming at the top of its lungs, amazing amount of wasted real estate. It's weird because Fleer Ultra had always been kind of an elegant card and the card back always had some intricacy to it. And here they just went, you know what? Here it is. Get over it. And you may notice I'm not quite over it yet. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot. Now the parallels for this card set are, these are pretty interesting because the gold medallion, you'll notice it's die cut, which for Fleer, they had very rarely done die cut parallels. That was more of an upper deck thing. So here with this, this was, I think the first time that they did, no, it's not the first time that they did a parallel that was die cut because they did that in jam session in 1995, but this was a pretty unusual affair. It's not a lot of die cutting. It's just rounded off at the top, but it makes the cards very distinct and a lot more fun because of how different they are. But you'll also notice that the gold medallion text is now a design theme around along the top of the card. So it's integrated more into the kind of busyness that these cards tend to have. But I've also got a note about the finish of the background, which in this case, it is, it's also a metallic gold, but it actually kind of changes. So there are times when there's hardly any gold finish and the, the colors of the background actually come through. There are other times where you move the card and then it's, the whole thing is just turned into a gold finish. So it's actually kind of an interesting card they pulled off. But the platinum medallion cards, obviously everything is done with silver. But in this case, the cards are numbered out of 50, not out of the 100 that you would have assumed. So here they're trying to make this a lot more challenging. There's a lot more of a desire for you to be ripping through packs. So definitely scaling things back. And then for the rookie cards, the rookies are the same as the regular cards, so they don't have anything different, except they have a red box down at the bottom instead of black. They also are in their college uniforms, but when you get over to the platinum parallel of the cards, well, these are serial numbered out of 25. This is a very difficult portion of the set to collect because these cards are very well pursued, one card in particular. But that was it for the set. They didn't do a subset. They didn't even do checklist cards. It's just veterans and rookies and you're good. So fortunately they made up for it by having six inserts as opposed to five. And the first insert set is called Dream Team, which I would love to say is copied from Score because Score is no longer around. But in football, I can't say that. Score was still around, so they just went with Dream Team. These cards have a very dark finish on them with kind of a space-like effect that almost looks like a tractor beam from a spaceship is coming down on the player. The card though is all about a star effect that is speckled around on the card, which we had seen that in Pinnacle in 1998, especially with the WNBA cards. Here, it's at times difficult to see, and at other times it's very prominent, it's very clear how it comes across, but it really makes the cards look really cool, especially with the dark background on the, on the card. The next set they have is a horizontal card called Fast Lane, and this is quick playmakers. And what I like about this is they took away the, the natural environment of a football player, and they have this kind of speedy effect where it's very dark and it shows the player in a way we're not used to seeing him. That, it really is kind of interesting. I, I like how the, the cards come across. They did not do Caught in the Draft for, nine, or for 2000, but they did kind of replace it with a set called Head of the Class, which does the same thing. It's the rookie cards in their college uniforms. It has a prism effect on it, but here it's a, a fragmented prism effect, which still kind of has the grid to it. Kind of strange how that works. And the backdrop is very bold and very bold. 
I think that's the word that I want to go with for these cards. And then they have a set called Instant 3Play. And Instant 3Play is basically a look back at notable performances over the course of the year. So this is looking at whether it's a performance or it's a statistical achievement, whatever it is, it is essentially a look back at the previous year. You know, pretty basic. But they did have one card that had some intricacy to it, which is called Millennium Monsters. And this has a light embossing to the, to the card. It has a very dark, heavily lacquered effect to the card, but it also has copper foil. And I don't know why companies didn't use copper foil very often, because that orange burnish looks really cool. Makes this card work really well with the particular color tone of the cards. So it's not an it's not an overdone card. It's just subtle enough that it's kind of intriguing. But the last insert set is one I really got to take a note of, which is one by one. And the reason I got to take note of this is that the card has the edges of a playing card, rounded corners. But in 1999, Fleer Metal had done that with a whole set. And metal cards in most cases, but not in all cases. And this is a card that could very easily be mistaken for being in that. The hollow foil does it, the edges do it. Obviously the Ultra logo shows that it's Ultra, but it's one card that I gotta note, it actually shows up here in this set. It doesn't show up in the, in the metal set. At any rate, that was it. That was the close of 1999 to 2000 Ultra. More streamlined, more straightforward, just kind of knock through it, which is kind of a relief considering how big some of the sets had been in the previous years. But also at the same time, there was more magic with, with, at least with the inserts that you got between Series 1 and Series 2. Here they weren't doing that, but they had finally established a model moving forward. So all card sets would have just little tweaks here and there as they moved forward. But at least it was reliable, which would give Ultra the ability to hold up with Fleer all the way through to the end. So, I'm going to look at 2001 and 2002 separately. That's going to come up at some point. I'll get around to it. So definitely watch out for that. Do subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you very much for watching.